Papa. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Right in the end. Wow. Where's my man? There's my man, William Satterwhite. Let's see. Bring him on here. Six foot three, two hundred thirty five pounds. He climbs the ladder. Ah, dang it. Let's go to overtime. McKee here to John Humphreys. Power through a few defenders. Stanford takes a thirty one twenty four lead. Next Oregon possession. Fourth and eight. Joe, the ball game here for Oregon. And it was a bad possession overall for Oregon in overtime. They scrambled and running around playing play around ball. Didn't work out for it. How's this for a match stat? The last four times the undefeated Oregon team has played at Stanford. William, what's up, my man? Nothing much. How you doing? Come on. So you're watching this uh, Auburn LSU game. How about you? I'm watching the end of Indiana Penn State, but I'm probably going to be turning to Auburn LSU in a second anyway. <sighs> That's a hard hitting game, there, man. Uh, um. So uh, what about the uh, um um Yellow Jackets, man? It's two in a row. What's that? I said you yellow jackets. No, they lost today. Oh, I thought they won. No, they got Don't blown out by Pitt. Oh God, I got the scores mixed up when it came across the screen, man. I thought <laughs> I just looked up there. I thought they had won that game. My bad. I didn't mean to. Uh, I guess I was so focused on them other games today. I didn't go up there and watch some of them. Uh, did you watch any of Georgia? I didn't see the Georgia game, but they did. Uh, I think it's funny. We came into this weekend probably thinking that this was going to be a good weekend for some SEC, the, the two top SEC teams, to see if they were going to be uh, tested, and neither one were tested. No, nope, not at all. And um, as far as uh, like Ole Miss, um, I throw that Kiffin had his best shot last year when he caught Saban off guard. Cause he, yeah, he gave him a, a year to work on that that offense that he was throwing at him. Um, well, you know, Jordan, I still think that they were expecting to do better just because of that oh, uh, yeah. that quarterback. Because you know, Correll was a uh, he was considered to be a Heisman contender before today. I don't know if he's I, I I don't know if that's the case right now. Oh no, no not after today. And then uh, you know, there's there's so much. There's such a um, drop off from Alabama and Georgia and the rest of the ACC. I mean, uh, <laughs> something we probably talked about before. I thought we talked about a few weeks ago. I heard um, Stoop say tonight that uh, Kentucky well, no, that, could be a that, final. Uh, that makes that Kentucky. Can Kentucky they, actually do? Can Kentucky can Kentucky hang with Georgia? Can they? I don't think. No, I don't think they can hang with Georgia. I remember a couple of years ago when they played. They was had a decent. Oh God, what was that kid's name on that team? A tailback. They had a they had a, they had a quarterback, a tailback, and receivers really good. I'm gonna say this year they won ten games, but Georgia beat them pretty bad. Um, I know they've got a decent team, but I heard Stoops say tonight that 
he was going to get that program to be a top four SEC team. And I thought, huh, I've never heard that as a team's go before. You said a top second. four? Yeah. They, they basically what he was saying is, is he could be the second best team in the SEC East, which I guess he could put you in the top four unless, you know, you got three great ones in the West. But uh, so I was like, huh, I've never heard anybody put that as their goal before to be the second best team in their division. But I guess if, you know, if you're going six and two in the East at Kentucky and nine, nine and four, ten and three, they're going to build a statue. Well, you know what? I, if you if you take into account that the West is so top heavy, you know, obviously you have Bama at the top, but then you pretty much, if we're going to be honest with you, now that Arkansas seems to have turned things around, you legitimately could make an argument that between two and seven, you could flip a coin between either one of them in any given year. I mean, LSU might have, you know, yeah, LSU right. or Auburn might have that one magical year like they've had in the past, in the recent past when they've won national championships. But pretty much that West is is a, a coin flip between two to seven. So when you think about it, someone's going to, you know, you're, you could have a you could have a second best team out of that division that conceivably loses four or five games. So if you're yeah. the number three team out of the East, let's say you lose to you lose to UGA or Florida, but you beat the other one in a given year, and then you beat the rest of the East, aren't you theoretically a top four SEC team? Yeah, with I think a ten, that's exactly with a ten and two record. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what it was. Yeah, and I mean. And, uh, you know, Saban's not going to be there forever, so surely, you know, somebody's going to have to step up. Um, but I mean, I, I see Stoops' argument, and, um, you know, now he's beaten Florida, what, two out of the last four years? Uh, I mean, is Florida down there on that – is Florida that – on Kentucky level now, or is Kentucky rising to the cross? That's what I want to say. I mean, I, I, I legitimately – I think Kentucky is, is on a higher level now because, like I said, <laughs> well, you know, it, it, I, I guess, like I said – I've, I've been making the point for the last couple of weeks. There's no reason why Kentucky – I mean, sure, they're not they're not in Georgia or, or mm-hmm. Florida or Texas or a big recruiting state, but they're close enough. I mean, you're, you're close enough to Ohio. They're close enough to – there's talent in Ohio. There's yeah. talent in Indiana. There's talent in, in Virginia. You're close well, enough to some talented states. That you can get some, you can get some talent in there. There's no reason why there there's no reason why Florida has to be worse. That I, there's no reason why Kentucky has to be worse than than Tennessee or South Carolina. Good, uh, that's an excellent point. I mean, uh, yeah, I've never. I mean, uh, you're right. There's no reason why they can't be just as good as those teams. I mean, it's just like I said, it, it's always been that they always place more of an emphasis on basketball compared to football. Like I said, there's no reason why they can't be a an elite football. I mean, maybe not elite, but there they can't. There's no reason why they can't be a good football school. Yeah, I mean, I agree totally. You know, since they started, what I want to say, um, uh, maybe it was the guy that was. Before, oh God, I have to see him right now on the sidelines. He coached at Oregon, and um, then he was in the NFL, and then came to Kentucky, and. Oh God! He kind of started this little stretch they had there. I can't think of his name, but why is his name? Uh, Rich, Don Morris. Rich Brooks. Oh, Rich Brooks. Okay, now, now oh, now you, you're triggering my memory more because I'm going back to um the guy before Guy Morris. Um, God, uh, Hal Mummy. Uh, well, the guy before Guy Morris would have been Hal Mummy. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going back further because I was trying to remember when Kentucky started, you know, winning some games, and now I can remember back when Hal Mummy was there. It you know, was before how mummy it would have been uh Bill Curry. That's right. Before how mummy it was Curry, and before that it was Jerry Claiborne, I believe, right? Uh no, I don't that that's yeah you've gone too far for me. <laughs> yeah, so um because I remember uh they when Mummy was there, they beat Alabama in Lexington. That was the first time they'd beaten Alabama since nineteen twenty seven. Yeah. So yeah, he kinda got the little stretch rolling and you know they, they well, you know, it was it's funny. Them. They were talking huh? about it. It's it, they were talking about it during, during the game where Florida they had beaten Florida at home since like the eighty, I think like the mid eighties. 
34 and years I remember, or something like that. Just a couple of years ago, they had all those big streaks. Like they hadn't beaten yeah. Tennessee for so long, and they hadn't beaten Florida for so long, period. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think they have any of those big streaks going anymore. No, because it had been like 30-something years against Tennessee. And you're right. I remember when they beat Florida, finally. They were going there in the swamp. So, you know, those those are gone. So, uh, you know, that's the one thing, too, that, you know, when you, you've got a thing like that. You've got to start believing you can win those games mm -hmm. instead of, you know, finding a way to lose them like Kentucky's always been. Now, mm -hmm. they're winning those games. You know, that's 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 a big difference. Um, so, so we'll make, well, we'll I seem to remember, like, with, during the How Mummy, during the How Mummy mm -hmm. and the Guy Morris days, and even in, uh, even a little bit during the Rich Brooks days, you the, what you just said was was spot on. That they 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 would win they would win like maybe one or two of one of those games a year, but mm -hmm. the rest they would figure out a way to lose. I mean, like I remember you know, two touchdown leads. Yeah. Do you remember who? But now they're figuring it out, and like I said, I. I, I, I put together earlier a little breakdown of who I think are the national – of how I think the playoff of, – of the tiers of teams that I think are in, in contention for a playoff spot. Uh -huh. And Florida's right there. I mean, uh, Kentucky. Kentucky is right there. I still have them right there. I mean, if you – you know, if they if they, if they lose to Georgia and that's their only loss – you could possibly have I, three if they lose if, if they lose to Georgia and that's their only loss and there's enough chaos everywhere else I see Kentucky I see there being in our and, and I do see it playing out that there's I have the top, I have Georgia and, Georgia and Alabama are definites right now I, I I think it's fair to say yeah barring so. any major disaster yeah the Big Ten, yeah. whoever comes out of the Big Ten, assuming that they have no more than one loss. And then I think if, if the Big 12 doesn't produce an undefeated team, I think that you have a big argument between a one-loss Big 12 champion, Cincinnati, presuming that in Cincinnati goes undefeated, and a one loss SEC number three. Uh, man, it'd be hard to go against that one loss SEC team. Well, I, uh, well, I, I I think that they would probably they would probably just because it, it, because it would be it would be everybody would not want to see it. They would probably go for Cincinnati or Oklahoma or whoever whoever happens to be the one loss Big Twelve champion. But you would, it would be a that 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 SEC number three would have a very compelling argument. Yeah, so like, I'm looking at Kentucky's. I'm looking at Kentucky's schedule right now. They got LSU coming up next week. Okay. They got a, a look, looks like a decent Louisville team at the end of the season. UG, so UGA. In, in three in two weeks, or uh, actually three, no, actually, yeah, UGA in three weeks, two weeks. Mississippi State, who just beat Texas A and M. Tennessee, and they've already beaten Florida. They have a decent. They have a decent shot. Yeah, I would. But I would say. I mean, Here's here's what I would really say would make it more interesting. What if Kentucky beats Georgia? Oh God. <laughs> oh. Because oh. now my my three my idea for getting three SEC teams in the playoffs has been predicated on the idea of at the at initially it was Florida, but now I'll say put now I'll put Georgia uh, Florida, Kentucky in the, in in that position. Is that with Bama losing in the SEC championship game? Uh huh. Is that having Bama lose in the SEC championship game, like Georgia? Now this Kentucky? scenario, this scenario would have Bama winning. Okay. Basically, it would be Kentucky beating Georgia, finishing undefeated. Bama okay. beating Kentucky. Okay. And then you have Kentucky and Georgia sitting there with yes. one loss oh. between the two of them. 
Oh yeah, you gotta put those three days in. Yeah, there ain't no I feelings mean, about it. Especially if it's a close Georgia Kentucky game, and how can you? Uh, yeah, you that, that those three that, those three have to go in. I mean, like I said, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty interesting. When it, it's gonna be pretty interesting to see how it shakes out. Uh, yeah, I mean, going down the stretch here is gonna be. I can't even look five games into it, man. You mentioned A and M. Uh, you think they're getting uh, restless with Jimbo? Uh, you know what? I think that he's going to be able to – I'm not sure how how legitimate it is. I, I don't know how legitimate it should be, but he's going to be able to use that backup quarterback excuse to get away with it. I mean – if if they, I mean, if they want to fire him, they still got to pay him the seventy five million. And I, are you going to be able to get no, somebody better? But, but, and, and and now that it, you did, you have been making an excellent point with that. But something that I've been wondering about that is, if you fire Jimbo, who do you bring in to replace him? Exactly. Are you, I mean, you gonna, are you going to be able to go find a better, I mean, bigger name than that? He's won a national championship. Um, and keep, and keep in mind, if you're paying Jimbo seventy five million to go away, because you well you pay Jimbo <laughs> seventy five million, how much are you going to have to pay somebody to replace Jimbo? Yeah, his buyout, uh, salary, not, not to mention assistance. I mean, you're talking to what two hundred million dollar coaching change? Yep, one hundred fifty million. So I think, unless <laughs> I don't know if they'll be able to work this out, but. <laughs> Let's say LSU does want Jimbo to replace Ed Orgeron. Can, oh, would it be possible for Texas A&M to, to, to pay LSU to take him off their hands? Oh, God. Now you do have the whole um, – I don't know how that would work out if they wanted him. Uh, I think a and would be ready to get rid of him if, if LSU wanted him. Uh, I just I don't I just can't figure that A and M job out, man. It's, it's just I've always said it's just a fool's errand. I mean, there's no that, team, that should be a top five team. I, mean, I, I can't figure it out. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got that recruiting base, fan base, money. I mean, they got and they and they can't win. And I mean, I don't care who they bring in, which coach it is. I mean, they've had some big names come in there, and it's the same thing every year. Well, it's been going on since they hired Cheryl. I, I keep on, I, I keep on harping on. It's just, it's kind of like, and I and I like the fact that Michigan is five and zero to start off the year. Yeah, they because do. I keep on going back to the Jim Harbaugh thing with Michigan, and I keep and I keep wondering, okay, what are you really? Yes, the ideal should be that Michigan should be a top 10 team every year and you should beat Ohio State every once in a while. Oh, but yeah. How realistic, how, how, how realistic is that really in the year 2021? Okay, I understand and what you're saying with that. That's kind of what I was saying a while ago with Alabama. I mean, you know, we, we, we can't have this discrepancy you know, with three or four teams above everybody forever. I mean, um, I, I mean, can we? Is, is it always going to be like this? I mean. Well, no, because like I said, I, Clemson has caught up. Because there are some things that I found out about Clemson that I didn't realize that, that kind of makes their fall from grace a little bit more understandable this year. Because uh, Dabo hasn't been doing the uh, – Apparently, Dabo doesn't play the transfer market game, and that's – I think that's probably set their program back a little bit, and I think it's and, – and we're seeing it – we're seeing it catch up with them this year. And then uh, Ohio State is always going to be there until Michigan or Penn State can push them. So – and I think that's the uh, that's the issue in the SEC with Alabama is that you need somebody to push them. So until you get that, that's really the only reason why Alabama's on top every year is because 
nobody has been able to consistently push them. I mean, like I said, LSU had their one LSU had their one miracle year. Auburn had their well, one miracle year. Yeah, what's crazy Auburn is that Malzahn was three and five against Saban. Malzahn was three and five against Saban. <laughs> there's, there's, you know, you can combine teams in the SEC that have won three games against him. Miles on can go three and five against Saban. And that had to yeah, be frustrating all the fans. You know, to be seven and six and beat Alabama. <laughs> yeah, but you got to think about it. He went three and five against Saban. But those are probably the only, those were probably the only, matter of fact, Saban ended up winning a national championship one of those years. Yeah, they did. They did. And you got to mm-hmm. think. Uh, yeah. Uh, other than the, basically, his only other two losses, he, he only knocked him out of the playoff two times. Yeah, that except because uh, his first year in 2013, and I've still said that, um, and I've still made the argument that, that was the best team Saban's ever had. They just wasn't the best team mm-hmm. that day. I mean, that team had everybody coming back for I mean, almost three straight years. I mean, I, that team was loaded. But they just wasn't the best that particular day. So we talked about Jimbo. So the um, so the ACC's the out of it. I mean, are we ever going to see um, Miami come back? I mean, this is what we talk about this every week. But I mean, this is where they just get worse. And uh, who was they talking about? I thought they mentioned Meyer's name with that job. You know what? I'm I've been thinking about Miami. And this kind of goes back to what I, this kind of goes back to what I was thinking about with the uh, about with the Michigan question. What is there in in the year two thousand twenty one? Not nineteen eighty, not nineteen eighty six, not nineteen ninety, not two thousand, but in the year two thousand twenty one, what makes Miami special? Um, you know, I, I, that's a good question. I don't know. Uh, There's nothing. I mean, it's not nothing like you say that come but remember, Schnellenberger said when he came there, and I'm sure the population is bigger now. He said, "All we got to do is lock down Broward, Miami-Dade counties, and we don't have recruiting where else. We got enough football players in these three counties." The, uh, and, and 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 that was a good and you could do that in 1980 you could do that in 1990 you could probably do that in 2020 and it would still be a big deal but while you're locking down Broward, Dade and 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 the other county there's I mean, think it's because you've got stop, Florida, Atlanta, you're just focusing on those three counties down there in south florida there's still talent in in, in orlando and tampa and and jacksonville and, and and all over the state of Florida, and then there's still talent in Georgia. There's still talent in Louisiana. There's still talent in California. There's more ta- there's more talent in other parts of the country, to where, yeah, you might have your little you might have your little three county area locked down. To, as Schellenberger used to call it, the state of Miami. You might have that. That's right. You might have that brick <laughs> You might have that brick wall around your state of Miami, but if Florida State is getting the best kids out of the rest of the state, if Florida State and Florida, and let's not mention uh, Central Florida. Well, yeah, because you got something to say. You got them, Florida Atlantic, Florida International. I mean, Florida. Yeah. You got some more Florida teams down there now. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. You're right. Now that you put it that way, I mean, there really well, like isn't. It's, it's, and it's also the fact that you have you, you don't have a you don't have a stadium. And yeah, that's you're, like you're, away. Huh? I was just thinking about. Oh, I'm sorry, I was thinking out loud. Yeah, you're right. The stadium's like 45 minutes away from campus. Yeah, you don't have yeah. a stadium. You don't have really good. Uh, I don't understand what they're doing with their money down there in the state of Florida because apparently all the all the facilities down there are crap. So that's what I've heard. That's why, that's why Jimbo left Florida, Florida State, and Miami's got crap facilities. So you don't have all of this other. There's nothing down there that makes Miami special right now. Like I was thinking about the game the other day between them and Virginia, and I was just thinking about it. 
it was a perfectly decent game between two average ACC schools. <laughs> that says a mouthful right there. <laughs> and, 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 you know, the only thing is because, yeah, Virginia, that makes sense. But with, with Miami, you're thinking, well, Miami should be bigger and better. and uh, but, but why? Miami's got nothing going for them right now. <sighs> Except for memory, like we grew up in a day and age where Miami meant something, but yeah. that was because Miami could mean something back then. The things that made Miami special back then, they don't hold any weight now. But they just kind of, I mean, it's, it, it, I don't know if it's, I guess maybe it's like Nebraska. I don't know, but Nebraska has been there for years. But when Miami lost it, I mean, it was like overnight, you know, they was playing for national championship. Two years later, um, they're fire, firing. Oh God, and Larry Coker, and that's been it. Um, well, it, it was. A, I mean, like I said, it, I was watching it in the ACC country. It was a little bit. It, it was a little bit gradual. You could kind of see the. You could kind of see the 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 bloom glowing off going off the rose, so to speak. But it's been. It, it's. But like I said, I also think that it has. To, it goes back to the fact that. It's just the evolution of the sport just gradually eroded everything that made Miami special to the point oh, yeah. where Miami's not special anymore. Yeah, I, mean, I don't, I don't think that allure has it has that allure to it. Um, so, uh, like, I'll, I'll be of, honest with you, as I fought following the ACC a little bit because, of, like I said, that's where my school is at. Yeah. If you just had to choose between the jobs in the ACC, I pick Clemson before I go to Miami. I would pick Florida State before Miami. Right now, in the year 2021, I probably pick North Carolina, Virginia Tech, or Virginia and Virginia before I pick Miami. Miami is probably no better than the. Matter of fact, I might pick NC State before I pick Miami. Miami is no better than the seventh best job in that conference. When you brought up again, because I forgot about the stadium being so far away and it not on campus, that that's that's a big that's a big thing right there. I mean, that's yeah. um, I mean, you're talking about you, you don't have any. I mean, and you see, that it was it was a little bit different when it was the, like when you, when it was the Orange Bowl. The Orange Bowl was kind of like the Rose Bowl with USC yeah. and you, like, like with the the Rose Bowl with UCLA and uh, the 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 Coliseum with USC. Even though it's not your stadium, it's still you're the main you're the main thing in that stadium. With Miami just playing in, they're they're basically it's a they're just paying to play in that stadium when the when the Dolphins aren't playing there. That's a Dolphin uh, yeah. Stadium right now. Yeah. <laughs> it has – that's not Miami Stadium. It's the Dolphin Stadium. Well, you're right, it is. I, I mean, that, I wasn't even thinking about that earlier. Because I was about that Miami job. I was like, you know, I'm just why can't they like, – I forgot about that stadium. Not being, you know, being and then, like I said, like that. even within the state of Florida, it's nothing special because, <clears throat> I mean, you're not on – you're not – this is the one thing people forget. About. You, you hear Miami and you probably think, oh, you're, you know, the the, lo the, you know, the yeah. luxurious beach and everything. <laughs> you're in the city of Miami. You're not on the beach in Miami. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, one of the Florida – I know Florida Atlantic and Florida International are both down there. If I'm not mistaken, one of those schools actually is closer to the beach part than University of Miami is. Uh, there is. Well, I forgot it. which one it is. Um, I, I, oh God, I can't. But yeah, um, you know, you're right, Ben. Like ben in the city of Miami. I mean, UCF. Matter of fact, I was, I've I've been thinking about this lately. With UCF going to the Big Twelve, and the assumption, until proven otherwise, that the Big Twelve is going to remain. A an, a, a an autonomous power conference, UCF is probably the best job in that state. Ooh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're probably right. So, so you got to think about it now. If the Big Not 12 is still going to remain the Big 12, 
you are the one, you're the one state, you're the one Florida school in that conference. You got, you got three or four Texas schools that are, that are dividing up the Texas part. And then you got Oklahoma State, Kansas State, and all these other schools. You're the, you are in a you hotbed of talent. And you're not going to have to deal with, like I said, Florida has to deal with competing against Georgia and Alabama and Auburn and all the rest of the SEC. Florida State and Miami, you basically have to compete against each other. And then on top of that, you have to compete against the rest of the ACC. Dang. You, yeah, you're just yeah, sitting there. Florida's best. Well, I mean, you get to go past it. Well, we can't have this. What, what the, the SEC calls? I mean, the SEC, you know, uh, the league. Like, I said, the Big 12 has to remain or something has to give. We can't have just the, you know, the SEC championship, you know, pick them 40 teams, you know, from the South and or wherever and have to you know, make their own conference because that's where it's headed to. Well, you know, a lot of these people that have been talking about the SEC turning into a mini NFL, I – Right now, there's nothing else out there that makes it – unless the SEC were to just kill off college football altogether, there's nobody else. out. I mean, I, they threw out the whole Ohio State and Michigan thing and, and Clemson and FSU. Okay, yeah. if you have a total team SEC with all of those other big-time <laughs> schools in there, eventually – isn't Vanderbilt in South Carolina and Tennessee and all the and, and and you know the I guess that has to make Tennessee feel good that I just included I them in that category <laughs> with Vanderbilt. <laughs> but eventually, if you're one, if you're those lesser teams, aren't you sitting around there saying, "Hold on, it was hard enough for us to compete in a <clears throat> it's hard enough for us to compete in a 14 team conference." <laughs> and now it's going to be even harder to compete in a 16-team conference with with Texas and Oklahoma added. <laughs> now we got to compete against Ohio State and Michigan and all these other schools. Oh, that's God, crazy. That's, well, I mean, they're going to what kick them out and and have the you know, the 24 best teams and just play on what a round robin at the end. Uh, I but mean, you know, but, the, but it also it, it also. I also look at it the fact that everybody else who's left on the outside looking in is also going to sit around there and say, hold on. <clears throat> you know, you still have some pool here, too. Like when um, the Big East fell apart. Remember Syracuse, Miami, and Virginia Tech, and Boston College? I think it's all, you know the big teams left all at once. You have, I think you had for a few years there, you had what, Pitt and West Virginia and UConn. Um, mm -hmm. That's what this thing's kind of reminded me of, especially you know, if we go back but out you know, west. And, and, and you know, this is what Mike Slive tried to pull. It. Mike, well, uh, is it who's the who's the SEC commissioner now? Uh, is it still, uh, no, it's um, Sankey. Oh, it's not Mike. Slav, it's Sankey. This yes. is what Greg Sankey tried to pull. A, Greg Sankey tried to pull a fast one on on everybody. He got the whole playoff thing, the playoff expansion pushed out in in advance. Up to talk about at Texas and Oklahoma coming into the SEC because he knew there was no way that, that, it, that there was no way they were going to go for the, the playoff expansion talk if they knew that Texas and Oklahoma were going to the SEC. Right. Yeah. I mean, it was a good, because good that, move. Because you see, the thing that the thing that it with the big the Big East ex imploded. Because remember, the Big East actually was able to. That's how that's how UConn and Pitt ended up with Fiesta mm -hmm. Bowl bids. The Big yeah. East was actually able to keep was actually able to keep on and held its place until the playoff came along, and the playoff upended everything. And that's why the what what used to be the Big East, which is now the American Conference, lost its place in the at the top of, in at, as a Power Six conference. Yeah. So until the until they redo the contracts and everything, the Big Twelve would still have its place. Remember when we had all the uh, like Florida State, Miami's independence, and um, yeah, you know, in, 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 well, Miami and Florida State, and I was trying to think of um, oh God, another team that was the independent. It was pretty good, Syracuse. 
um, Boston College, and then the S Southwest Conference kind of imploded all at once. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, you know, they rushed to join conferences. I guess that's what really started all of this, because you remember um, the second place SEC team used to play, have to, used to play the winner of the Southwest Conference every year. And the that's when we, in the Cotton Bowl, yep. So your second best team was playing our champion every year. And that's when that thing that, you know, Arkansas and Bolted and uh, and that was a good conference too. Because I don't think he ever supposed it was the big eight. Um, you know what? It, it's funny. And this is why I never, I, I'll never cry about anything that happens with the big 12. <laughs> Is because the Southwest Con if, if if you had a time machine and you could go back in time to win the Southwest Conference, it went went away. They would probably have stuck it out and and stayed in place because if you think about it, the Big Twelve, the if you didn't. If you if the Southwest Conference never goes away, and the Big T Big Eight stays where it is, it would be a whole lot easier to add on to the the the, the land the current landscape of college football would be drastically different. Yeah, you're totally right. So on that. you would have it would be easier for these these small schools who who've come up out of nowhere. Like Cincinnati, Cincinnati would easily slide into the old Big Eight. Oh yeah! Oh, wait a minute. You, you, you know, like these, and, and just like with the Big East, the Big East, the Big East could have stayed alive. The and and they could have just carried their carried their way. Especially because they had a lot of, I mean, they had basketball to carry them too, uh, which a lot of you know a lot of leagues are going to have. Is people forget that you know we play other sports besides football. <laughs> Um, that well, that's, a, that's that's one reason why the that's one reason why a lot of these wild rumors about the all these conference expansions and everything kind of went kind of went to the wayside is because until they figure something out, it's one thing for a football team that has to make one trip every week mm -hmm. to go from Austin, Texas to hypothetically, I guess the farthest trip that they could make would be to Gainesville, Florida. Okay. But now you take that baseball team, are you going to put the baseball team on a t on an airplane every time they got to go from go from Austin to Gainesville? That's what costs a lot of money. And baseball actually, I mean, it's not basketball and football, but baseball is still a revenue sport. Oh yeah, <coughs> most definitely. What about the volleyball team? What about yeah, the golf you team? Gotta, yeah, you got because football's got to carry all of them sports. Yeah, you got. What about your golf track team? team? Uh, yeah, but you're right. So like I, said, I, think people, I didn't even talk about that. Like I, I said, I think that, that, that's why I think that's why I think. That's why and people have joked about it and everything, but that's why I think this call this alliance that the back the Big Ten, the Pac-12, and the ACC formed is prob arguably the smartest thing to be done, because I oh, think yeah. they are looking at those issues and they are looking at it and saying, "Hey, now yeah, we oh. could have cherry picked apart the Big 12, but ultimately, <laughs> is it really worth it, it? It does it really do?" college sports as a whole any good to do that no i don't think so when i first heard it i was like i was like man, you, you can't add texas and oklahoma to the sec and then four well, divisions texas, i mean texas only people, i think the texas and oklahoma in the sec sounds bad just because texas and oklahoma are arguably top five top ten programs in college football right being added to what was already the best league, but when you think about it, once you added up Missouri and o matter of fact, once you added Arkansas, once you added Arkansas, Arkansas, it was a game changer. Yeah, it's a technically. I'll be honest with you, if they if they do if they go to that pod system that they were talking about. Texas and Oklahoma in a pod with Arkansas, Texas A and M. 
and maybe it's Missouri. I don't know how that would. Well, they showed, they showed four um, with, with well, just adding them, and I think it was it was Oklahoma, Texas, Texas a and Arkansas, like in one. Mm-hmm. The Missouri, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, and I think it was Kentucky. And it was Alabama, Auburn. It's, 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 it's probably going to be one of those one of those schools that's like in that in that middle part. That that region is going to be disadvantaged because, but yeah, yeah. It, it, it it's really kind of it it really kind. It's probably better for Oklahoma mm-hmm. and Texas and Texas at this point to be in the SEC than it was to be in the Big Twelve. Yeah, as far as travel goes. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, it makes more I – mean, if, if this, especially if it's headed in that direction. Um, I, I mean, that, to me, that's the only matter fact, you think point. about it. West Virginia is farther away from Texas and Oklahoma than any other – than any school in the SEC. And I've wondered why they haven't went after them hard. I would have uh, thought that would have been – I, and I wondered last time when they got Missouri, why did they not go after West Virginia? Instead of going West Virginia, the- I mean, West Virginia, they have a good football program and they have they have devoted fans, but it's West Virginia. <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Uh, okay, that's fair enough. Uh, we After I think of it that way. Uh, so we've got now uh, – the Big Twelve. I mean, what are we going to do with them? Because like, you still got some good teams. I mean, not the Big Twelve, the um, the Big Ten. I mean, with Michigan coming back, Penn State's there. You got Ohio State. Um, I mean, we can't just throw that whole league away, can we? No, I think the Big. I think the Big Ten. If you're talking about just this year, the Big Ten is. I mean, I'm not going to say. I mean, because because of the way that the skip because Penn State has to play Iowa, yeah. And then, so I, Iowa could conceivably beat Penn State and run the table, but between Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan, and Michigan State, I I, I don't see anybody coming out of that round robin without a loss. Well, I mean, I don't mm-hmm. see anybody coming out of that round robin with go. Yeah, I don't see anybody coming through there without a loss. So, I think at most you're probably going to have a one-loss Big Ten champion, or maybe an undefeated Iowa. So, if if it wasn't for if, if they if it wasn't for that factor, I would say that they the Big Twi- the Big Ten could just as easily make an argument for having two playoff teams, just like the SEC. I agree with you. We haven't talked since that. What about a uh, uh, Nebraska's loss to Michigan State last? <laughs> Did you see that? I did. Well, it was an interception in overtime, right? Yeah, uh, but they, if I remember, I got to remember how they had come, that Michigan State had come back, if I remember right, because there's been a lot of games since then. But I think Nebraska had a, see, I would have to go back. And oh, yeah. And I think they also, had, they gave up a, they gave, they gave up, up a, a punt, re, punt, a punt return, return for a touchdown. Well, yeah, like three minutes, or yeah, hardly, wasn't much time left. And then, um, I don't think, I think there was. I thought there was up twenty to seven. I could be wrong, and they came back and tied it. Um, but it was just, you know, I just, I just remember thinking of that game. <laughs> it's like again, asking God, is are they ever going to come back? Yeah, I just don't see it. Um, I know we keep talking about it each week. I just don't know how how you can't do it in Nebraska. Well, like I said, it they're and, it, and it's kind of ironic because Barry Alvarez came from by came from Nebraska. Yeah. But they really just need to adopt the Wisconsin mindset, the Wisconsin model. But, but they didn't. But I don't get that. Why did they not go back to that? That was Nebraska football. I mean, like you said, get uh, separate them big, big, Midwestern farm boys and put them on the line. Especially, and, especially when, like I said, I when when Callahan was there, I know that he 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 recruited a couple of drop back passers, but. Matter of fact, I keep I keep on thinking that they're the same guy. I think it was a Taylor Martinez was Bo Pelini's quarterback, and now the new yeah. the, this new kid is Alex Martinez. Yeah, but they're basically the same. They're basically the same quarterback. They're 
running quarterbacks who can't throw the ball. <laughs> and then, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, and I'm like, why are you not going back to this? What made Nebraska Nebraska? I mean, matter of fact, I'm going to check and see if they're related because, like I said, I, I I've been thinking <laughs> every time I see the kid's name, I keep on thinking that he's the same guy who was there under Bo Pelini. Um, and I thought Pelini was going to do it there for a minute, but I mean, I just, uh, I mean, are there, first of all, we have to go find an option coach. I mean, somebody's got to bring that back. I was for talking about that the other day. I mean, you, know, you imagine a team like that getting in the playoffs right now just uh, with nobody else, you know, getting a look at it, at it all year, like a Nebraska of the 90s? Uh, I, think, I think, like you said, I think it would be a big time. I think it would be a big time. I, 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 I mean, think it would be big time. I mean, listen. You know, five or six of those big boys. One is a glorified guard, a running quarterback, and you guys have two backs, one speed receiver. Like I said, it's going to get four catches a game, but two of them is going to be 70 yard strikes. I mean, I don't see why that's, 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 all, that's all you need. Yeah, you ain't got to have a lot of athletes. You know, let all them load up and load them athletes. You know, we're just going to line up and eat you alive with this option. I mean, the man, Nebraska used to trap teams to death. And when it was run right, it was it was beautiful. I mean, Paul Johnson was at Georgia Tech. I mean, I loved his offenses. Mm-hmm. Um, That's why I, I, just, said, I, I don't. I would think it would be. I, I, <clears throat> and, and plus, you have a fan base. This is what. This is why it would definitely work. You have a fan base who wants that. Who who is yes. used to that kind of. Yes. And but yes. nobody. I don't know, but. And you have to have a look. You have to give us, you have to give that coaching staff a couple of years to get them players in position, and learn that. But I don't see. I mean, the fans, you're right. I mean, that's what they want. They're not going. They're not going to take anything else. They don't like this other kind of football. Um, well, I think, me, you know what? I think the my the Nebraska fans, they just want to win. Yeah. So as long yeah. as they're winning. If they were winning doing the other stuff, they would be glad. They would be happy for it. But yeah, that's true. They're not winning. winning. Cures everything. But yeah, when you're not winning. But I mean, can you bring an offense in there besides option and recruit in Nebraska? They haven't yet. I mean, you just don't have anything there to offer them. No, because it's it's <laughs> and, and that's why. Like I said, that's exactly why they. Because again, it's 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 Wisconsin. Without a lake, yeah, it's Wisconsin I mean, without a big lake by it. Because <laughs> I mean, what's really the difference between um, them and a lot of the Kansas or Iowa schools? I mean, it's, it's out in the middle of nowhere, man. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you have nothing to offer these kids to come in there. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I don't know, but I guess we'll see. Um, all right, West, uh, I was it's a Southern Cal. They pulled the trigger pretty quick on him. I thought they'd at least wait until the end of the season. You know, I did too. But then again, I <clears throat> even though I was even though I was all, always iffy about him being fired, I do think that it's it's good for them to have done it when they did, because for the simple fact that if you know that this, if you're convinced that this guy, if 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 you have to, if you come into the if you come into the season with the mindset that this guy's not if this guy loses more than three or four games, we're firing him. And so you're you're basically saying he has to perform at a certain level in order to keep his job. And if you can see after three games that that's not gonna happen, sure. Fire, fire. You know, I've often wondered though, if if you, why do you even bring the guy back from the previous year, if you're gonna have that kind of pressure going in the next season? I mean, they don't have they don't have the right man in place. I mean, they're waiting for Urban to burn well, out. Said, and... <laughs> with USC, I was kind of like I said, I because I, like I said, I, I I look at USC kind of like I I look at the uh, the Michigan thing with Jim Harbaugh. Okay. Yes, USC should probably be at a certain level, but when you take yes. it, when you factor in how they struggled before the guy got there, see that's what I'm looking at. It. I'm I'm looking at how did you, you know, 
the guy didn't take over a well oiled machine or anything like that. Uh, but would they still have been? What would happen if they had been, ever got put on probation, though? Uh huh. Would they have still been at that elite level if they hadn't got busted and put on probation? Oh, definitely. Okay. Definitely. So, yeah, I mean, so that, that took a, a lot out of them. So, the only thing I do look at Southern Cal different than Michigan and like Miami is you're right there in West Hollywood, man. Oh, yeah. That's I mean, why, had, don't get that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I always say that's why I would never say USC, U, U, USC and UCLA. UCLA are in a totally different class than Miami or, or a school like that as far as what, because even though the NFL is back in LA now, it's still you. You're still going to get a hundred thousand people that want to come out to the Rose Bowl Absolutely. six times a year to watch UCLA. You're still going to get ninety something thousand people to come to the Coliseum to see USC six times a year. So I mean, it's you, the dream you're not going to have the, you're not going to have the Miami issue. I mean, they had uh, actresses and uh, you know other movie stars out there hanging around practices. And that's going to be tough on the coach, you know, to keep all that, to balance all that. But as far as getting talent, I don't think there's been a problem. Well, well you know, this is the, uh, and and like I said, and maybe now this is going a little bit off of just on the field coaching, but Clay Helton always struck me as kind of a, and you know, this is the kind of the thing that I, I've noticed about USC. When they had their most success, it was when they had Pete Carroll. And Pete Carroll yeah. is a guy who has a personality. <laughs> he yeah, is, he does have a personality. He's, a, he's basically a star himself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah but I've noticed USC, Clay Helton, Larry Smith, Larry John Smith, Robinson. John Robinson. Paul Hackett. Every USC coach from my lifetime has been – a wet paper bag other than Pete Carroll and, and Lane Kiffin. Um, yeah. I mean, they were about as dull as, as you can get. Uh, I mean, that Larry Smith thought about a blast from the past. For that man, God. Uh, I mean, it, for my lifetime that I can remember. Yeah. Going rub some of because I don't remember, you know, I'm too young to remember. Like um, said, John McKay was before my time, John but McKay, everything yeah. I've heard about John McKay is that he had a personality. Yeah, I've you know, read about you know, him. The He's, Tampa Bay, uh, when he was with Tampa Bay, he said, What do I think about my team's execution? <laughs> sure, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> yeah, so, he was the first one to brought up um, uh, with, when they had Doug Williams, they kept talking about uh, having a black quarterback. He said, I have a quarterback. <laughs> He, uh, what was that? I said he, he was the one he brought pointed out to reporters. They kept t bringing up the fact that Doug Williams, you know, you have a black quarterback, and he said, "No, I have a quarterback. It doesn't matter <laughs> what color he is." <laughs> and they're like, "Oh yeah, kind of remember old. he was there? He would have been the. Uh, I want to say he would have been the head coach back when they played Bama, right?" Um. Yeah, he was there from sixty four to seventy. I think from sixty four to seventy eight. So yeah, he was there. He was the head coach then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was. I wonder if he regrets leaving USC then. Uh huh. I wonder if he regrets leaving that job, at the height it was to go take over an expansion team. Uh probably. The, I think any college football coach who is at who reaches that level, I think they. I, I think, <clears throat> obviously. Obviously, he doesn't. It, well, he he didn't. But I would be more. I would be more. Wor I, I would wonder more if someone like a Bear Bryant. You know, he almost took the Miami job. Not yeah, not not making that jump. I think it was sixty nine or seventy. Before they hired, I think before they, before they hired Shula, he had he he accepted the job, and then mm -hmm. backed out. And I mean, it would have been. Uh, you know, talk about alternate history and you know, what would have happened if he left Alabama and then gets fired after three years. <laughs> but, but like I said, it's the kind of thing that 
it's the kind of thing that I think if you reach that level as a as a coach, you got to go for it because, like with the Steve Spurrier situation, even if you fail, if if you fall flat on your face, you can at least say I gave it a go at the highest level possible. And then you can also say, well, there's going to be some really good college football job that's going to be open for me when I come, when I'm ready to fall back down. Yeah, that is an interesting comparison. Uh, you know, yeah, Spurrier, you know, I think that deep down the, the great coaches, they want to make that, you know, they have that itch to go try it. Some of them aren't made out. I think what intrigues Spurrier the most, about, though, about South Carolina, because it wasn't, you know, an excellent job, but he turning it into a champion, and I think that, that was going to always eat at him that he was so close to winning an SEC there. Uh, but never got it. Um, I keep on, I keep on going back to it. If you're at any SEC school other than maybe Vanderbilt, you have to be look and and maybe maybe Mississippi State. But I don't know how much how is Scott Field is how many people does Scott Field see? There's not uh, a seven. Like around fifty. No, around fifty. It's, it's in the fifties, right? Yeah. Yeah. At Ole yeah, Miss, like, how many how many does Ole Miss see? I think it's only around forty-eight or fifty-two. Okay, so so other yeah, than other than Vanderbilt and maybe the Mississippi schools, if you're at any of those SEC, if you're at any SEC school, including Arkansas and Missouri, and obviously Texas A and M, if you're at any SEC school, you're looking at it. You got to set you you're you got to have seventy thousand people in the stadium every Saturday, minimum. Or sixty thousand in the case of Missouri, sixty thousand, sixty to seventy thousand plus in the stadium every Saturday. If I can't, if I can't do anything with that, I just don't deserve to be coaching because yeah. your support is going to be there. Because first of all, like I said, other than other than Vanderbilt, we're all big state. You're all big state schools. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Auburn, you're not a you're not the state school, but you're still a big you're still a big uh yeah what do they call it? uh what's what's the uh um, land grant land grant school yeah I, in in South Carolina big state school Georgia big state school Florida the big state school Tennessee the big state school Alabama the big state school LSU the big state school. Missouri, the big state school. Arkansas, the big state school. So you're, you have, you basically control your own destiny as far as your, uh, your, your, uh, your board of trustees and everything like that. You've got you, you basically have it made, it, and and you got sixty. At Missouri, you're gonna have sixty thousand. I think Kentucky is in the sixty thousand range too. Or does Kentucky seat sixty or seventy? Uh, I think they're closer to seventy. Okay. I'll so now, I think so. Even though Kentucky, they are just sixty, but still, even if it even if it is in the sixties, you you got sixty thousand. South Carolina, I know you got seventy thousand plus. Oh yeah, I think you got maybe eighty thousand. South Carolina, but you, that, that's I, a big I think, I think it is up to eighty thousand. Yeah. Yeah, so and, and, and like I said, those fans have been coming to fill that stadium up when South Carolina wasn't doing anything. My whole life, I've seen them fill that stadium when it was 0 11. They was rat. I mean, they right. were a rabbit fan base. So if you could just do something, and, and if you can't make anything out of that situation, you don't deserve to be coaching. Yeah, because South Carolina, man, it's an interesting job because I can, throughout my life, I mean, I can remember them, you know. Having teams that were making a run, and then a few years later, be a little eleven. I mean, uh, I don't know if I'm, uh, what Rogers was there. Uh, they got a number two one year. Um, then you know, it's just uh, I don't know. It's hard to explain. It's not like a job you're going to want to reach out and get, but one is. I mean, it's still an an intriguing job to me. Well, you know, like I said, I would put. If I had to put together the top 10 jobs in the country, aside from like the obvious, 
like that everybody's always going to say UGA, Bama, USC, Ohio State, those type of jobs. But if I was to say the top 10 maybe underrated jobs in the country, South Carolina, UNC, NC State, UVA, Virginia, Kentucky. And you got well, the uh, Kentucky Auburn. Before Mark Dukes. With uh, Auburn, you know, it was ranked the um, – I said the thing the other day, but they was, it was ranked the 13th best job in the nation. Uh -huh. I said a thing the other day where Auburn was ranked the 13th best job in the nation. You yeah. Know, some of those uh, other schools. Um, yeah, I mean, I, could, I mean, that North Carolina job told me I was surprised Mac Brown got them back that quick. Or another thing. Uh, who was that I'm before not, him? Because yeah, I, I saw. I I remember watching that team the year before we came. He there? probably will because he's a he has proven himself enough that he's probably going. He's probably earned enough to get another job. But Larry Fedor, I will say, is in that uh, – he's in that uh, Kevin Sumblin range to me <laughs> as a guy who probably should never get another job just because he ran that place into the ground. And, and especially with Sumlin, man, he had so much talent at Texas a and I mean, he had – I mean – well, I forgot about – have you – there's a uh, – you know, these people who get paid to track talent and everything, they've tracked it, and Arizona supposedly has the worst talent out of any Power 5 conference school. Really? Because Yes, because Sumlin did such a poor job recruiting there when he was there. And then he said he did such a poor job that they say that the Jed Fish, the guy who replaced him, yeah, he is going to take – it's going to take him about two or three years just to get back up to normal Arizona recruiting standards, let alone trying to be better than what Arizona has been known for. And then someone had I – mean, look at how many – uh, NFL quarterbacks he had in Texas A&M, <laughs> he ran off for sitting on the bench. <laughs> that's that's that's, uh, the, that's the funny deal. I, I remember that year when they had Kyler. I mean, he had Kyler Murray playing against Alabama, and I was like, God, that guy's good. And <laughs> yeah, you're right. He probably has. Um, remember when Fedor was at? Just speaking of a school that I can't believe can't get it back that Alabama played is Southern Miss, man. I mean that. They used to be the biggest school in Mississippi. I don't know. They, I don't know if they still are. But <coughs> they have some good teams. Well, you know, Southern Miss's problem, and I kind of hope that when the Big Twelve gets the big, because supposedly the Big Twelve is going to expand again, and they're probably going to bring in Memphis and uh, maybe SMU or somebody. I think they're still trying to figure out who exactly they're going to bring oh, in. Uh, I've heard UAB. <laughs> UAB, but UAB is more. I think UAB is more on the uh, Americans' conference of uh, the Ameri the AAC's uh, wish list. And this is what I would like to see when the AAC does whatever it's going to do. I hope that it completely kills off Conference USA, so that Conference U what remains of Conference USA, which would include Southern Mississippi can fold into the Sun Belt. Well, that's I think Southern Mississippi. Put together there. Huh? That's, that, that'd be a nice little conference that you're putting together there now. It, it, it would be. But I think yeah. Southern Mississippi has been – got to think, you go back to 20 years ago, well, 20, 20 years ago, Southern Mississippi was in a conference with Houston, Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. well, 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 let me, let me, let's, let's backtrack. 20 years ago, Southern Mississippi was in a conference that included Louisville. Where's Louisville at right now? ACC. Cincinnati. Where's Cincinnati headed? Cincinnati's headed to the Big, e, Big 12. Memphis. Oh, you're right. Memphis is already left, already left them behind once. They're probably going to leave them behind again. 
uh, South Florida, they've already left them behind. East Carolina, they've left them behind. Houston, they've left them behind. Uh, TCU, they've left them behind. And that they are basically the they are basically the last holdovers from the old conference USA along with UAB. But you got to think UAB shut down their UAB shut down their program and rebuild it in between the time that that Southern so that's basically true. Southern Mississippi is the lone holdover that's just been sitting there rotting in Conference USA. That was the craziest thing when they closed UAB for that year or two. I, uh, however long it was now. I couldn't believe well, it's, that. It's, it's it's the kind of thing that the embarrassment of it yes. brought about <laughs> good results all around because they now they, they're gonna have that nice new stadium there. And it's probably gonna be a good thing for Birmingham because they're probably gonna bring some more events down there. Well, but the thing about it is is you got that that stadium's only about I think forty thousand people. You've just lost the SWAT game. Uh um that you know, you had a hundred thousand. Well, I could all get in the stadium, but you had a hundred thousand people that come stay up there in Birmingham during that game. That's a lot of revenue they're going to lose for that. Did they used to have a did a hundred thousand people really go to there that game? Be, I mean, there'd be it's, it was it was not a hundred thousand people would come actually to the game, but there would be people showing up down there all through Birmingham for it. You'd have 75 from how many of us at least field at the game that would go in, but but now, it, it but now here, all now follow with this though. Now. You take a hundred thousand seats at the Legion at the at the Legion Field. The Legion, which was in in all honesty, it's a dump, right? I mean, you would you would you would agree with that? I mean, sorry, it's definitely outdated. Um, I've been to some of them about when they used to have the SEC or when they had a the bowl game there and they bring an SEC team in. I used to go watch them. I watched Kentucky. Watch Vanderbilt. I was there that year. Ole Miss beat Pitt. Um, it's not as bad as people portray it as, but you mm -hmm. know, it's definitely a stadium that's well past its prime. But now you're saying about you're talking about lost revenue. If you have this new stadium that has basically you're going to increase the demand for the tickets because now you have mm -hmm. half of basically you're going to have half the tickets available, right? Yeah. You're going to have half the tickets available in a nicer stadium. You can charge more for your tickets now, can't you? Yeah, I mean, see, this whole thing is such a catch because where it's located at, yeah, it's a nice stadium. It's a great area where it's at. But you're only talking a few miles from where Legion Field was at. So is it worth putting all that money into that instead of fixing up Legion Field? Well, I, I think didn't they? Wasn't that a big consideration that they figured out that it was it was cheaper to build the new stadium than it would have been to renovate Legion Field? <laughs> well, see, the crazy <laughs> we've talked about this in a minute uh, on another subject, but the crazy thing is back before um, Langford went to prison, they had a tax increase and raised a billion dollars to build a, a dome stadium. And they had the mm -hmm. money. <laughs> they had raised the money. I asked one of the councilmen who was on the, the council. I said, what happened to that billion dollars? He said, well, that was money that was raised for the project. I said, well, okay, well, what happened to it? He goes, well, after they canceled the project, it got redistributed to the councilman's districts. I said, okay. He goes, and then after that, it got redirected to where they see it needed best. Like, great, so y'all just stole the damn billion dollars. <laughs> 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 was essentially what happened, but they had a billion dollars for that. So I mean, I don't know what they've done with all this money. Um, as far as I, you know, I forgot how much it was. Uh, but I don't think they're spending like, oh god, I think the stadium cost forty million dollars. And but they don't have a five thousand fans that show up. I mean, can you justify that? Well, now is I that even with the new? Because the the new stadium is open now, right? <laughs> yeah, I haven't checked attendance, but. See, the thing you're trying to look at the UAB is, it's different than, than probably a lot of other urban universities. Is, is this such a commuter school that I would have to just look at their enrollment? But you've got so many people that are going back to school, you know, 35 and 40, you know, going to school part time. It's not like a traditional school with the, the rabid, you know, mm -hmm. fan or Without, college kid fan base. I think that's yeah. kind of because that's kind of like with Georgia State down here in Georgia, where 
it's the largest school yeah. in the state, but half of your students aren't living on campus. Right, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly, that's exactly what it is. I mean, because I, I mean, there's a lot of people that enrolled in UAB that, I mean, nobody's, you know, no students. I think the, one year they had, I think the biggest crowd they've ever had, maybe around 40,000 people, and that was back when Southern Miss was oh, they, good. They, they, they uh, drew 37,000 for their game today. Did they? Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh, I, mean, I don't know how many of those were were, were rabid uh, Liberty fans, but it still seems pretty good. Is she free still at Liberty? Yep. What? I was talking to a friend the other day, and I was like, "When a guy like you know, first of all, I don't know what Hugh Freeze did, um, or who he pissed off for, the, for them to know go through his cell phone and know how to what number they was looking for to tie those uh, uh, those escorts." But I was like. Why do these schools make a freeze, you know, go wait for three or four years and um, rebuild his image before they hire him? You know, you're, you're going to hire him. Just go ahead and take the backlash and hire the guy. Mm hmm Well, I think, I, mean, with the, uh, I think with the Hugh Freeze situation, they had to wait for the uh, – because you remember there were some there were some MCAA violations. There were some NCAA yeah, that's true. questions going on with that. Yeah, I forgot about oh, that. He did I, have I think that's the reason why Hugh Freeze had to go away for a little bit. Yeah, I forgot about that all. Um, about all the, all, all the players he bought off of that. I mean, that's what I thought was going to get him fired. I didn't think he was going to end up being calling the you know the escort service. <laughs> oh, I'll still laugh about that one because that year. Um, I don't know if you remember that team that year, but they would start off. I remember they started off in Florida State that year, like thirty-one to seven on Alabama, twenty-four to. Three, it was like a tale of two halves. They totally fell apart in the second half of every game that year. Mm -hmm. But you know, I thought, um, you know, when Saban wouldn't even touch him as an assistant, to, or the analyst told me something was up because Saban, Saban has everybody down there as an analyst. I mean, that's how you go through the part of the, re, uh, I guess, the process. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh. You know, talking about him the other day, I still can't believe Sark got that Texas job. I, I'm, I don't know. You, I don't you know. know what he's. I, I, I have to do a. I have to. I have to be give myself a a. I have to give myself a little bit of a rebuke for this because, I was. I matter of fact, we had a conversation about it. I was totally not sold on that hire. And I thought that Sark was going to fall flat on his face, and I especially doubled down on it after the Arkansas game. He's starting to look like he's got it going there at Texas. Yeah, he, he does. I mean, well, well I think um, you know, probably going to have to let it play out. Is well, four or five games into his tenure. Um, mm hmm my my thing with Sark is is his, is his personality. Is he gonna be able to handle dealing with thirty old men board members up there, uh, or is that gonna be too much for him? Well, I uh, if I'm not mistaken, and, and like and and I know that there's never really a good answer when it comes to somebody recovering from a an, an abuse. And a, 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 a substance abuse issue, even if the substance is alcohol, there's really, like I said, there's no real good way to forecast that. But I would like to think that part of his recovery at at, at Alabama and in the NFL with the Falcons was getting that under control. And I think that if he does indeed have it under control. I don't think he'll have a problem because he was, he was good at Washington, and he was under yeah, control. Yeah, he got out of control. When I was looking at some of his receipts. They have eleven shots of tequila at lunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a Patron. Uh, I mean, you know, I don't know. I, um, I guess you you have a good point there with his um, you know, his problems with alcohol. I see, he seems to have it up under control. I, mean, I know he's got um, – he's very tight wound, so I, 
I don't know. I, I don't know what to think about somebody. Uh, I can't you know, make a judgment on that. Um, just, just the job, though, in general. You know, like you said before, you know, it's been since, what, 1969 since they won a national championship? Mm -hmm. It's like you got to really start having to answer too many people at Texas. Well, like I said, I, 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 I guess I'm just – I, I guess really I'm just a softie at heart <laughs> because I look at, like I said, I look at these teams, like, like I look at these teams like the Texas, Texas A&M, Michigan, Notre Dame, you know, the, the, the schools that people always look at and say, well, why aren't you guys winning more? And why aren't you win when what they really mean is why aren't you winning national championships? Because yeah. those schools win. Even when Texas has struggled of late, they've still won. They just didn't win when it mattered. And I, and again, I always look back at it as, okay, if you're in the SEC West, one, you got to play Bama. Two, you got to play LSU, Auburn, and uh, – one of them, you, you, you can pretty much assume that between Mississippi and T Mississippi State, at least one of them is going to be decent in any given year. Yeah. Yeah, that's, so that's true. Four, if you take those four, if you take those four, that, that foursome, that, matter of fact, that fivesome, including Texas A&M, somebody, that, that's five, that's at least five losses that have to go around for everybody. Oh, God. And that's not in, I mean, that's not counting the game against Bama. Well, that's like I wouldn't even look at one of those jobs in the West, man. Like, like a Mississippi State or an Arkansas. I was like, I gotta go play Texas A&M, Alabama, Auburn, LSU, and then my luck, I catch uh, Florida and Georgia in the here out of the East. Oh. Yeah. Like I said, well, I, I I would like I said I would love to have a job like that. Or no, well, like I said, Texas A&M, yeah. LSU, and Auburn definitely. I would love to have a job like that just because, like I said, I would make the point clear to everybody that, look, I got to play Bama every year. I got to play the, the other two out of the big – out of the other two out of the lesser three teams every year. And I got to play Ole Miss and Mississippi State, too, who are going to be – they're going to be trying their damnedest. So, you get, like, guess what? Like I said, just – Somebody's got to lose some of those games. Now, do I oh, want it to be? Do I want it to be me? No, but as a fan, you got to understand. There's going to be losses there. Oh, God, that's like you know, um, two days, a couple of years ago when Alabama lost uh, lost those two games, um, you would have thought that the world had ended. <laughs> I was like, uh -huh. you know, Alabama's, Alabama's first two losses. Two, Alabama had two losses in the SEC in a decade. It's like, okay, so they, they, two losses in the last 10 years, okay? It's not the end of the world, Alabama mm -hmm. fans. You know, we're going to be okay. You know, I promise you, they're going to be fine. And, you know, of course, yeah. they lost right back. <laughs> but, you know, you thought the world had ended. You know, Alabama went six and two. I mean, two losses. And, and look at who those two losses were, too. You had a, you had a, you had a generational LSU team and an Auburn team that, was a legitimate top ten team. And Alabama was missing half their defense and their quarterback. <laughs> Matter of fact, that year is the perfect example of what I'm talking about. You yeah, had LSU, yeah. like I said, you had a you had a arguably the greatest college football team of all time in LSU that year. And then yeah. you had Alabama and Auburn were both in the top ten going into the Iron Bowl game. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, you had Georgia was a uh, Georgia was definitely a top ten team that year. Yeah, and I want to say was Florida in the top ten that year too. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember that. I, I think that was a top ten Florida team. Yeah, so like I said, you that's that's five top ten teams. So now imagine if you're – hypothetically, if you're Texas A&M or Arkansas or Ole Miss or Mississippi State, 
And let's say you just get the luck, the unluckiest draw ever, and you got to play Georgia and one of Georgia or Florida in in your crossover game. You gotta you gotta schedule four top ten teams, four four teams who finished in the top ten. <clears throat> God, I mean that's that's a murderer's row. Yeah. I mean, like I said, you like can't have those things. I would love to have a job like that, but I would I would make sure everybody understood stands when I take the job. Just imagine just just how hard this is going to be. And so if you have it. one of those years like Mullen did at Mississippi State back in 2014, you know, when they went 10 and 3, that was a generational year. I mean, Mississippi mm-hmm. State 10 and 3, you know, they still lost Alabama, but you know, that's unheard of. You know, uh, you're not going to stay there long. I mean, because you know, uh, if you have that kind of year, but yep. or do you? I mean, you, know, you can go eight and five at Mississippi State and be there forever. Well, you know what? I would. This is what I would tell. If you treat me like uh, mm-hmm. if you treat me like uh, Iowa has treated uh, Kirk Ferentz, I would definitely mm-hmm. stay there. Well, you know, Iowa has had their, they've had their ten and ten and one, eleven and one, ten and two type seasons, but they've also had some six and six clunkers in there too. But they've stuck yeah. with them. If you if you get that kind of commitment from your from your AD and, and and your administration, I would I would stay at one of those big SEC. I would I would stay at one of those mid tier SEC schools. Because you, you know that's. I would say that's what you. Yes, if you stick, I will give you the ten and one and the eleven and I'll give you the eleven and one under ten and two seasons, as long as you as long as you accept the six the occasional six and six season, because a six and six season is going to come. So as long as you're doing, as long as you're willing to work with me, I'll I'll I'll, I'll, I'll do it. And I like you know I'm I'm okay with that. I think that's a good attitude to have. You know, I kind of laughed at um some Georgia fans. Um, I told one, I said, oh, I said, where do you get off with this attitude of entitlement? Where, why do you think you're entitled? I said, you're not even Auburn. You damn sure ain't Alabama. Yep. <laughs> and I told him that. I said, look, I know you have, but you're not. I mean, you're not there yet. Until you no. get there, you know, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> but I mean. We'll see. I mean, maybe Kirby has it this year. Maybe. I didn't like know. I, I, I'm, I am fully preparing myself for that possibility. Oh God. Um. But uh. Yeah. It's getting a little bit uh getting a little bit uh late. So. Okay. Yes. Right. It's uh, after midnight there. All right, my man. I'll talk to you soon, and um, you have a good night. And uh, hold on, just one second. If I cut this, I got to tell you something. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, oh, never mind. I cut that off. Whenever we go back, uh, I'll edit that. So, um, I, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the news, but Alabama's just uh, governor just signed a bill that um, is going to use all the federal COVID money to build prisons. Build well, <laughs> prisons, yeah. yeah. Wait a second. What's it? Finally, I got the state our state legislature. He's gonna let me talk to him next week. I'm gonna pinpoint ask him this. They had three billion dollars that was already given to them by the feds to build prisons, and all that money's gone. <laughs> now there's like I forgot how much money. Maybe it was only two million or ten million. Or how much was left? But half the money from the COVID money's from the last time it's gone. So where the hell is all this money going to? I mean, who was mm-hmm. writing? I mean. You're talking about billions of dollars is coming up missing, and somebody's got to write the check for this. <laughs> where is all yep. this going to? I said, oh, I see where a state. Well, well, you know, a, uh, a, a friend of mine posted something, and and it, and it made me look up the budget. <clears throat> we bring in three billion. We bring in three trillion dollars in revenue. And US. if you just t- if you just take it if you just account for the stuff that we are obligated to pay for the things that by law we have to pay for, we spend six trillion dollars. You're bringing yeah. in three trillion. You're spending six trillion. <laughs> <laughs> 
How long is I, that sustainable? Uh, well, I mean, I that got me to thinking the other night while I was watching them. I was kind of bored, and so I pulled up those old um, um, videos. of the infomercials with Ross Pro back in 1992, and he had that thing down to a the dollar, man, mm -hmm. for what was going on with the budget. And, you know, it's been going on. You know, you're talking about then it was only around $3 trillion or so. I mean, that's what, $23, $24 trillion? I mean, if you yeah. – and, and, then and, it's and like, you see, the funny thing is, the funny thing is, is that people always say, well, just rate, you know, let's tax it. Well, yeah, you can keep, you can, you, you raise taxes, you might bring in an, you might bring in an extra billion dollars or you, you might bring in an extra trillion dollars or so, but you're still well, going to, you're, you're still spending six trillion dollars. Yeah, but I make that point all the time too. When people are talking about, oh, uh, let me tax all these wealthy. I'm like, all right, look. First of all, there ain't all that wealthy. There's like, you know, I think a million people fall in that top 1%. So that's like 0.33% of the population. So, okay, they're already paying 37%. So what, you going to put them in 39, 40? I mean, you know, uh, yeah, they're paying, they get the biggest tax breaks because they pay the most taxes. And I was breaking the charts. And, I and I mean, God, and they get so mad about that. But that's what I told them too. I said, this is pennies on the dollar if you tax them, you know, uh, one million well, people to more percent. To, and, and, and this is the thing that people have to understand. Bill Gates and bu both Bill Gates and Warren Buffett are on record as saying, unless you change the tax structure, it doesn't matter what you raise their tax rate up to because they're not making, you're not taxing exactly. them on, when you say let's well, tax the billionaires, you got to think. Bill Gates doesn't make a billion dollars every year. Right. That billion dollars that, that, that billion dollars that's beside his name is based off of years and years and years of growth. Yep. Bill Gates is only making I mean I I'm I'm just going to throw he's only making say a million dollars every year. Yeah, they don't understand. I told him that I said look uh, I had this on a post I said and I said that about change. If you want to, you know, change the structure. I said there's only 576 billionaires in the United States out of almost 400 million people. So you need to put them in a separate tax, you know, bracket if you're going to do that. And it's only going to be like what you said: what million, two million dollars a year, three million. They're not making billions of dollars a year. You, you can't get mm. people to, to understand this. It's like, you know, and then, then the budget stuff you ever look at. It's like. You know, the guy got mad at me the other day. I said, I said, this percentage goes to entitlement. He goes, that's not entitlement. He goes, I paid into that. I said, go read what the budget says. It says entitlement, okay? Mm -hmm. I said, so you've got this percentage here going to that. You've got discretionary spending, non-discretionary spending, military spending, non-discretionary military spending. I mean, it's like a, a, a blind three-fingered monkey trying to do a Chinese math problem. I don't know how the hell they put this <laughs> thing together. <laughs> you know, like, you know, like I said, it's it was, it's Six trillion dollars is being six trillion dollars is being spent in that non-discretionary spending. That's non-discretionary. That's things so that we cannot get away with not spending. Those are stimulus packages that went out, and I mean, if they broke it down. I looked, and it's like they're giving more money to Germany and Canada and England than they're giving to the U.S. What? The, I thought we'd go crazy if we were went up there and actually seen what was going on with the money. Oh, well, all right, my man. I ain't going to keep you. It was good talking to you, and uh, I'll holler at you soon. All right. Sounds good. Talk to you. All right.